in your life. And you begin to live and practicalize that experience in each and everything that you do. You'll find out that you and I are going to live victoriously as God's people. He says, no other gods before me. What that means therefore is anything that comes before God or anything that I put in front of God in my life can become an idol. That means that could be your spouse can become an idol. That means that could be your child, your son can become an idol. Your finances, your money can become an idol. Your job can become an idol. Everything that you put first before God becomes an idol. How do I know it's an idol? What you are finding yourself being drawn to first when there's a tragedy or an issue. That means that's the thing that has a center stage. For some of us, somebody has said that we use God like a spare tire. We only use him when we need him. But quite often times you see that in our lives and our relationships, who is first in your life? Who is validating you? Who is number one in your life? Three important needs in every human being, black or white, male, male or female. Three important needs. Need number one, we all are born in this world with a need for love. Somebody shout love. love. That's a need. You need that in your life. When there is a love in your life, uh, that's what makes you to relate. Number two, there is a need that you are born that emptiness that you are born with, and that's the need for acceptance. So there is, there is a, it, it is an empty space that desires to be filled in each and every individual. Love, acceptance, and significance. When you don't have those three needs in your life, you become vulnerable. When you become vulnerable, you end up filling those empty spaces with things. And those things in psychology and counseling, they call them coping mechanisms. So that you realize that if you are not careful in your life, you are ending up filling those gaps with the everything else that is not uh, supposed to be. But you are born first and foremost, your attention, the foundational force, if you like, is supposed to be God in your life. Chapter 20, verse 3 of Exodus, the Bible declared, you shall have no other gods. When a human being does not have God at the center of their lives, they will fill in the gaps with anything and everything else. So it's important that as I lay out my foundation today, let's begin to see how you and I uh, can be helped as we walk with God. Salvation is a doorway. It is not the end to everything. You begin in salvation. Salvation introduces you to the entry of the kingdom of God. There are actually seven dimensions from salvation to the enjoyment of the kingdom of God. After salvation, you are not automatically in the kingdom of God. There are steps that I want you to understand you need to obey and to walk through until then you enjoy what we call the kingdom of God. That is why the prayer of Jesus, Matthew chapter 6 says, when you pray, pray this way. Let your kingdom come in my life as it is in heaven. Salvation initiated. So when I am born again as a child of God, I begin a journey. And that journey begins to help me to uncover to begin to take out certain stuff and God deals with certain debris. He deals with certain vulnerabilities in my life. The brokenness that is in me because we're all born in a world of brokenness. And because we're born in a world of brokenness, the main thing that you need on the way, salvation initiates it. But you need to understand what's happening in your life. So you put my triangle there, you know, if you do have that diagram, just put it up there, let's see. I want us, I want us to see something, just common fundamental concepts that I believe are very important for you and I as we work with God together. You know that I presented it in many, many, many ways. 
I presented to us as the three circles of life, but I want to do something different as this diagram right now. And you see, you are a spirit who lives in a body and you have a soul. I am a spirit who lives in a body, I have a soul. You can say that with me. I am a spirit. I live in a body, I have a soul. Let's do it again. I am a spirit. I live in a body and I have a soul. With my body, that's where information is transmitted through the five senses that we know. It is with my body, in my body there, the five senses that I already know, uh, make me to gravitate towards what I like. If you were to ask me the truth, uh, what do I choose? Grilled chicken or KFC? My body with my five senses won't go for grilled chicken. <laughs> it's just me alone. Yes. My body would like pizza at any time. My flesh targets me towards what I like, not what you think I should have. Because my body uh, has its own controls around it and through the five senses. So it's important that you understand that with my body, I begin to detect the world, the natural world, or the physical world through those five senses. Your taste, your smell, your hearing, and your touch. But the spirit is where God speaks to me directly. I say to you, salvation initiates, is, is, is the door that, that opens me up to what I would say, I am now a Christian, or now I am saved. What is salvation? Salvation, it is God revealing his light, his manifest light into my spirit. Salvation is instant, but growth takes time. Yeah? And because salvation is instant, the moment I say, Jesus, come into my life, wash my sins with the blood of Jesus Christ, instantly I become a child of God. That light in your spirit Nothing will pollute it. But the thing that I want you to understand is the middle guy there. That middle guy there is what we need to talk and zero in on. That little guy is called the soul. If I were to put it this way, your spirit man, which is the real you, you are a spirit, is the engine of your life. That will carry you through to eternity. Am I talking? Your spirit man is the engine that controls everything and issues to do with eternity. But allow me to say the soul area becomes what I call the indicator signs that will tell you when something is wrong. And it is the soul area which is the seat of three things. It is the seat of your will. I will do this. That comes not from your body. That comes not from your spirit. It comes from your soul area. Your soul area is the seat of three things. Your will, your emotions, and your mind. And it's important that you get that as we work together on this. Because by the time we deal with what actually has happened in your soul area there, you will understand what ungodly soul ties. Because when we say ungodly soul ties, that goes without saying that there are godly soul ties. You have a relationship with the Bible like David and Jonathan. They were knitted their souls together. Marriage is an example of godly soul ties. It's important that you and I understand this morning as we begin on this. And I want to try by all means that I don't rush this. I want to go with you line by line so that all of us can understand. The soul area is where the issues are. On the soul area, that's where your will, your emotions, and your mind are. Decisions that you make come from that soul. But because we are born in a broken world, you will find out that that soul area, already when you are born in this world, is damaged. All of us here will be dealing with what I call childhood issues. All of us here will deal with the issues where rejection started to manifest itself, where abandonment, where isolation, where things that were supposed to have been done have 
were not done to you or for you. That woundedness created a gap inside of you. That if you don't deal with the damages that take place on the soul area, you'll find yourself dealing with the coping mechanisms. So you'll use anything and everything to fit in in order for you to pacify the empty soul. So, Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Let's see that one. Let me just give you the foundations as we go together. Chapter 4 and verse 18. Let's go there. And let's see what it says. Praise God. Chapter 4 and verse 18. Now let's see. When the gospel is brought to you and I, listen to what it says. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus is speaking. Because he has anointed me. Number one, shout with me. To preach the gospel to the poor. Shout with me. To preach the gospel to the poor. Now, see what it says the second part. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Because after salvation, your spirit man intact. You are connected to God. But the interference that makes you not hear God clearly is in the soul area on that diagram. And the soul area there, that is the seat of your emotion. That's where the receptors are. That's where the indicator signs are. So that if you do not make concentration and understand what's happened in the soul area, it is possible to be a Christian defeated. Possible to be a Christian still in bondage. But because you cannot conquer what you cannot confront. You cannot confront what you are ignoring. The soul area was created by God, designed by God to give you indicators. And I was telling you uh, in a funny way that uh, I, I've never rested. I've never rested my life where I would go and just put away the Bible. But you see, the indicator signs were always there. Josh, you need to rest. Josh, you need to take time away. Josh, you need to rest. But you ignore that and you find yourself going on the mode, I am fine. Ever been there? I am fine. And when, by the time you break down, you don't realize that the signs were always there. Warning you that ah, uh -uh, you cannot continue this way. So it's possible to be a Christian. Which you hear me well this morning. To live a life always stressed. You can be born again speaking in tongues, read the Bible, attending church every Sunday, but always on edge. Can we talk? Yeah. yeah. It is possible. It is possible to love God with all your heart and you try to do everything, but you don't realize that you are now living your life not as God has intended you to do because you are ignoring something that's very important. The indicator signs there are on the soul. Let me put it this way again, too. If I live in my life, my relationship with Aaron and the mood swings of Aaron affect me and I also become moody because he is moody that is a problem yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yes. is it getting him? Yeah. it's important for you to understand you are not, God did not create you to base your relationships or being affected by some of these issues. You are not designed to carry anybody's monkey. Amen. Yes. 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 Does that mean I'm being insensitive? No. I can care for you without both of us falling in the pit. Yes. Because if Sherry's mood swings were to affect me, you know, when I go into the house, I then walk in my eggshells. Because I don't want to upset. That's not God's will for your life. Amen. It's good to be free. Yes. And I pray that with this series, every ungodly soul type, because when we ever we've spoken about ungodly soul types, we have only 
thought about it in terms of relationship with people. Relationship we were formed made out of fornication or adultery. But I can go there if you like. That and godly soul ties that deal with relationship for you many people that are here. It is possible that they can carry you through into your marriage. You sign the certificate. You told them you love them until death separate you. But when you go for intimacy with your spouse, you could be thinking about your ex. What's happening there? It is because the ungodly soul time that was not broken then follows you through. It happens with anything. You can have an ungodly soul tie with your church. So that if you are not careful, you are more loyal to destiny than to God. Amen. You can be have a, an ungodly soul tie with a doctrine. Yes. 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 Yeah. What is the primary verse? Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. You shall have no other gods. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me, the Bible says, He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not complete only by saving your spirit. The gospel of Jesus Christ must cover the healing of the wounded soul. Amen. So we talk about three or four types of souls that are here right now. You have a sorrowful soul. God is going to answer for that. You have got a damaged soul. God has an answer for that. You have got a broken hearted soul. God has got an answer for that. You have got a split soul. God has got an answer for that. Because sometimes the pain that you pick up along the way, right from your parental unit as you go in authority, you will find out sometimes it can be so intense that every time as you live your life, part of your soul was being ripped away. Part of your soul is being ripped away. You trust again, it's being ripped away. You try to do life again with this one, it's ripped away. You have heard, you have heard when, when a soul is so damaged, you hear such statements, I don't trust any man. What's happening there? When the soul has been shattered and battered to such an extent that all you see now is no one can fix it. But thank God for the gospel. I said, thank God for the gospel. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set that liberty goes who oh, are oppressed. What is soul time? Soul, we've already said, covers three things. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's your soul. Your soul covers your mind, your will, and your emotions. What's your soul covers? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's a soul. A tie, something that needs together, something that connects. It's an agreement, therefore, that you make with someone or something. It connects you. It links you with that person. You become one with that person. Your loyalty becomes to be on that thing or with that person. It's an agreement that is being established. And some of this agreement that becomes so binding to our lives that no matter what we do, we find ourselves that bondage is so strong that God always comes as a secondary option. My prayer to God therefore is, let's give the priorities the rightful place. And when we prioritize, we want at the end of this series that God always remains first. Amen. Yes. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. So that um, whenever there is an issue in your life, the truth is, 
before you told your parents, before you told your brother, before you told your friend, before you told anybody, God wanted to hear it first hand from you. Yes. What you mean? Now that will happen even in your prayer life. You can choose to live a life where every time you are saying, pray for me. Or you can move your life to where you can say, I can pray for myself. Yes. Does that make sense? The journey of building in 2020 in destiny is to help you stand on your own feet so that you'll be able to deal with God first then. Yes. I'll give you an example here last time I said, if Josh, my son, had a problem and always would go to consult Mr. Dury, Mr. Dury tells me Josh has a problem every time. You know what that makes me feel? Many of us, we don't realize that. We do that with God. It's one of my peeps that I don't like intercessory groups in churches. Because we've used these intercessory groups in that, that uh, whenever we have a problem, you can't pray for yourself. So, please pray for me. So, pray for my mom. So, pray for my car. So, I've got a flat tire. So, the devil is a liar. Amen. Do you think honestly, God wants that relationship with you? Yeah. Where he hears every time from so? No. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Unless you're a cousin to God. If you're a son and a daughter to God, somebody shout, I'm free. I'm free. My prayer is, may your prayer life come up. It is the same thing I was saying to you. That you can be so loyal to the priest team that you miss the mark. You can come to church on a Sunday and your loyalty was, I didn't enjoy God. Why? Oh, the worship was off. <laughs> what do you mean the worship was off? Oh yeah, you know, the drums were high and uh, the, the keyboard was just too loud and uh, well, it's like they were out of tune today. You frustrate your day on the day of the Lord Come on. that you were supposed to be blessed by God. You are supposed to enter into your freedom. You are supposed to enjoy the liberty of the spirit. You are supposed to get out of this place and say on a Monday, I am free. The devil is under my feet. But just a service paint your mood. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I am what I am because of Prince. I don't know what was doing with that mixer thing. <laughs> Somebody saw the devil is a liar. Yeah. Let's go there. Are you ready with me? Yeah. Let's go there. The soul area affected one lady. I'm gonna use that and then I'm gonna pray. That lady was the name of Leah. In chapter 29. Verse 31 to verse 35. Let's read that and then we'll continue next week. Genesis 29 from verse 31 to 35. to go. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb. Her Rachel was married. What are the three needs in every human being? Love, acceptance, and significance. When the Lord saw, Rachel was unloved. You get it? When the Lord saw, there was a deficit in Leah's life. There was no love. I don't need to ask you to lift up your hand. 
many of us here can tell you shocking stories where your love graph is broken. But listen to that. Leah was unloved. God opened up a womb, but Russia was barren. Next verse, you know, let's go. Let's read together. So Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. Why? For she said, the Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now therefore, my husband. Do you see why she gave the son Reuben? Not because she loved the name Reuben. She was trying to fix the problem. Yeah. We see this. Yeah. You're with me? Yep. So that now you will understand. Most of the Africans here will agree with me. You are given a name by your parents, either because of the situation happening, or because of the weather storms that were taking place there, or whatever was happening there around. Names are not. That's why you find them difficult for for, for you. It's say say Gura Jena. Gura what? <laughs> you, you don't know. Oh, it's, oh, it's coming from me. You wonder who was Gurajena for crying out loud. It was some old man who used to sit by an anthill there, and uh, he was just called Gurajena. Just so that because your eyes look like that, Mr. Gurajena. And Gurajena becomes your ID name. <laughs> but <laughs> don't be so comfortable, Australians, because I'll, I'll come for you just now. <laughs> The Lord has surely looked on my affliction. It's my problem. But in order for my problem to be fixed, Reuben, that's up your name. Mm -hmm. So that anytime when I see you, Reuben, you are feeling the love I never got. By the way, do you know who was Leah? Do you know who was Leah? Leah was a daughter. To Lebanon. Leah was married by default. Leah was never loved anyway. I know right from the family background, she was not preferred. Mm? I knew very well she grew up with the hurt of feeling unloved because when Laban gave away Leah, it was almost like Get rid of this one first. Because Rachel was the preferred one. Mm. We all do that. Except me. I prefer <laughs> my children. Josh and Sharon. Sharon and Josh. Sharon and Josh. <laughs> Sharon and Josh. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. The Bible says. I am solving my affliction now, therefore, because I've called you Reuben, my husband will love me. We have a problem. The husband did not love her. What do we do? Whenever we feel you are not accepting me in your world, I take to give so. What she doesn't have, so that by giving her what she doesn't have, she will accept me. Okay. So that we find our relationships offering things to people who don't like. We want to accept acceptance from them. But if we are normal within ourselves, they will not like us. Mm. So we will serve them, sacrificing our authenticity because I want you yeah. to love me. Yes. What do you want me to do? I will clean your car. I will polish your shoes. I will take you everywhere where you want to go because I want you Come on. to feel the emptiness 
that I never received growing up. So is it possible that we are treating God that way? You come before God, he has given you the gift. But then the gift is now becoming an idol. You don't really love God. But you are using your gift to push you to love God. Listen to me, friends. God loves you without your gift. Amen. Can you hear me? Yeah. God loves you just as you are. You don't yes. have to perform. You don't have to do anything. God loves you first and foremost as you are. Yes. Amen. That's yes. why I love it. That when you go to heaven, I'm not going to stand there as Apostle Dr. Pastor Josh. <laughs> All of us will be equal. Round zero. Yes. Because he loves me yes. as Josh. Yes. Amen. Not because of my title. Yes. Not because of my job. He loves me yes. just as I am. Yes. 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 Amen. I'm going to finish it with us. 33. What does he say? 33, you know? Let's read together. Two go. Then yes. she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved. He has therefore given me the son also. She called his name Simeon. We are coming from Reuben. Now she has Simeon. But that's what we do. If this is not working, we try that one. Oh, I'll, I'll make sure that you feel loved by me by giving you things. You see, I, I often say that when, when we talk in marriage, it's similar with children, that you, you find this problem every time. A husband could be buying flowers every time to a wife who does not need flowers mm -hmm. as gifts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can hear when you sit down with them counseling that now, ask them, I do everything for her. <laughs> Why is she feeling unloved? Because maybe you are giving her uh, the wrong things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We do that all the time in our walk with God. She says, I still feel unloved. Therefore, she called his name Simeon. Why? You know, okay? 34. She conceived again, believe me, and bore a son and said, Now this time, <laughs> it didn't work when I tried to sing praises. It didn't work when I prophesied. It didn't work when I spoke in tongues. Now I'm gonna what? I'm gonna preach. That's right. And let's see if God will accept me for my preaching. It says she conceived the son out this time. My husband will become attached to me because I born him three sons. Call his name. Levi. Why? 35. Mm. <laughs> She's putting them back. Like, oh, yeah. You know, she's serious. She's going to see this mission. But don't you see yourself there? That's what we do. If I'm to ask you really, really honestly, why are you here? Why are you in this church? I want to know your loyalty. Why are you here? You may not want to tell me, but you know why you are here. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Conceived, bore a son, and she says, Now I'll praise the Lord. I'm almost thinking she's about to get it right. Yeah, she's almost there. <laughs> almost. Now I'll praise the Lord. Why? Therefore, she called his name who? Judah. What does Judah mean? Praise. Praise. Yeah. Hey. Whenever you move away from looking for love, acceptance, and significance from people, and you look it from God, yeah. then you'll praise him. Yeah. Because you praise him because you realize I've done my own way three times. Yeah. I pray for you that you will not linger and wonder long in your life before you get it right. That in every relationship that is going to be powerful in your life and foundational, your destiny is in God. Your future is in God. Your love is in God. I can't give Shelly what I didn't get from him because the love comes from God because God has no love 
but God is love. Yes. So I get it from him. Therefore, I give it to her because I can give what I don't have. 60% mm. of marriages end up in divorce. Why? Because it's two haters mm. who are producing simians and liver. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. And it's the law in the and Levites. Whether if you buy a car, you will not be satisfied. Whether you build in a house, you will never be satisfied. Yeah. All those are and Levites. But up until you say, Father, I want my Judah. Yes. Because when God gives you Judah, you'll be able to realize, be alone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shall yes. we stand on our feet together? In Jesus' name. Thank you. I just want you to, to come before God today and let's give you all the glory. You already with me? We give you all. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. shout your destiny. I pray against anything anything that will try to hinder my faith, faith. my health, my my success, success. and my destiny. destiny. In Jesus' name, name. I pray against every setback, any form of strongholds, and vices against me. Against my family and against my loved ones, shout it. I revoke against every spell, every curse, every demonic projection, every satanic spell. I overturn them and I come against every cohort of the devil and principality. That has been set against me. In Jesus' name, I decree divine vindication against my family and against my church. I pray harmony will prevail in my life. Hold your your head, if you will, with me. Say this with me. Today I decree a new beginning shout like you believe it. I decree a new beginning, a new beginning. and the 
long life for my life. I will not die. But I will declare the mighty words of God. God is for me. Nothing is against me. I renew my mind by the word of God. In Jesus' name. I give birth to Judah. For God is at the center of my life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give God a big hand of praise. If you believe that God is coming to everyone. In Jesus' mighty name. Worship you, Father, and I glorify you. Father, I declare as I seal every door over these people the flock that you have given to be shepherd over. That nothing that will rise against their life that will win. Today I close every door that will try to block them in any area. Today I block every door that has been opened by the devil through the parents, through the authority figures, in the name of Jesus, every ungodly soldier. I break forth your power. And in Jesus' mighty name, I establish a standard of God over their lives. Even now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, please shout and say amen. amen. Give God a big hand of praise to the Lord. Now, now Destiny, I want to say this now. The following weeks are going to be very pivotal. And I want to make sure that we have got ample time. So I, I want to make sure that uh, we, we cover enough time without me getting rushed. Because we are not getting into another level. The level that we are getting into right now is this church. We have never been there before. So I want to make sure that I have got maximum participation for everyone that is here. So let's make sure that you and I, as you go home right now, begin to write down things the Holy Spirit will be reminding you of. Some of them that you know, you didn't think of them in any in any way or format. You can actually find yourself forming and got the soul ties with the music you listen to. I want to go home and I want to begin to find anything. Who is first in my life? What's first? What's priority in my life? Remember, seeking first my kingdom and my righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. I want you to turn this ready. Draw all things down. Write things down. Make it easy for the team when we then pray for you and pray for deliverance over your life. I want to make sure that the ground is ripe. Okay? May God bless you. If you still require prayer in any area of your life, the altar will be open but it's we are closing. But I want to close this service right now and thank you for your time and once again for the questions. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. Your people have come your people are strong. I pray for them right now that God, as we go our separate ways, let this food be food for our spirit. As we begin to identify in this week, who is the Simeon in my life? Who is the Levi in my life? Who is the Ruben in my life? What are the things in my life that I've attached myself to where I'm getting my comfort? Some of them are not sins of hell and heaven. But Lord, there are weights, there are things that drag me down, that makes me not improve, that makes me not to move forward. Lord, I pray that when you drop them in the my spirit, that God Almighty, that deliverance will be real. I give you honor and I give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, send them home with your blessing. And I pray therefore the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father. And the fellowship of your spirit be with them until the day of Maranatha when Jesus comes back again. In Jesus' mighty name, God's people will believe in that prayer. Shout with me and say, Amen.